Hi everyone, Mike here. In last week's video, I showed you how to add traffic lights to a dashboard or tracker. However, the demo included a feature placing an image inside a cell, which is currently only available to Beta 365 users. I heard from several people who don't have the feature, but worse than that, if you are a 365 Beta user and you use that feature to add images to your spreadsheet, and then give the file to somebody running a non-beta version of Excel, they don't see the images. And any formulas that rely on those images break, they display an error. So in this video, in the name of inclusivity, I'm going to show you how to add a traffic light to your dashboard or tracker and have it automatically change colour as the numbers change. But this method should work for everyone. <laughs> I'm using the same scenario as last week's video, a step counter or fitness tracker. I've set myself a target of 10,000 steps each day, and I enter that number into C8. At the end of each day, I enter the steps for that day into the appropriate cell in row four. These are the only pieces of information I need to supply. Everything else, even the day name, is automatically generated using formulas. Rather than looking at numbers to work out if I'm ahead or behind of my target, I thought it would be much more fun to display a traffic light, which changes colour based on certain rules. You can see here that the traffic light is red, and that's because I'm at 68% of my target. And according to the rules, anything under 80% is red. If I change Friday to 20,000, the percentage is now 94%. 94% is amber. So how did I build this? Let me show you. I'm not going to build the whole spreadsheet from scratch, just the traffic lights. I have three PNG files. Each one displays a different coloured traffic light. I built them using the icons and shapes in Excel. And if you want to know how, go and watch last week's video. But you can use any traffic light image. So if you find one on the web, you can use that. It can be a JPEG or a PNG. The important thing is to make sure the images are the same size in terms of width and height. It'll make your life easier. I have a second sheet in this file called Setup, and in summary, I'm going to place the three images in separate cells in A2 to A4, and then use a formula to determine which image should be displayed on the tracker sheet. The images in the Setup sheet need to be sized correctly, because whatever size they are here is the size that they'll be on the tracker sheet. So to that end, I've set the height and width of A2, A3 and A4 to 200 pixels. So let's insert the images. Click on the Insert tab on the ribbon and click on Pictures. Now in the beta version of Excel, which is the version I've got, I get an extra menu and I need to choose Place Over Cells, Picture from File. But the non-beta version, when you click Insert Picture, it goes straight to the Pictures dialog. I'm going to select all three images rather than doing them one at a time. So click on Amber, Shift click on Green and Red and click Insert. The images are placed wherever the cursor was. So I now need to move them so they don't overlap. I can move them anywhere to start with and then position them correctly. And I want to put the red one in A2, the amber one in A3, and the green one in A4. I've decided the size of them is going to be two and a half by two and a half. So if I click on the red image, go up to the picture format menu and change the height to 2.5. It automatically sets the width to 2.5 because the original image was square. Then what I want to do is move the image so that the top right hand edge of the image and the image does include the white space around the traffic light. But the top right hand edge is flush with the top right hand corner of the cell. If I need to use the arrow keys to position it precisely, I can do rather than using the mouse. Then I'll do exactly the same thing with the amber one. So up to the picture format menu, change the height to 2.5 and then position the image. And same with the green one. 
height 2.5. When I come out of that height dialog box, it changes the width and then position the image. And then I'm going to select all three images. So click the first one, shift click, shift click, and make sure they are aligned to the center. So on the picture format tab, go to align and align center. And you may have just noticed they jump there. So they're all now lined up perfectly. On the step tracker sheet, I'm going to go to C12 and I'm going to name that cell. I'm going to call it percent target. Naming a cell is optional, but it'll make entering the formula that I'm going to do in a minute easier. So with my cursor on C12, click in the name box, which is at the top left, just under the ribbon and type percent target and press enter. If I just widen that name box, you'll see the name is in there. So the name percent target refers to C12. Then back on the setup sheet, I'm going to select a cell. Any cell will do, but I'm going to choose C1. And I want a formula in there. The formula looks at C12 on the tracker sheet. That's the one that's been named percent target. And if the number in C12 is less than 80%, it puts a one. If it's one or more, it puts a three. Otherwise, it puts a two. And those one, two and three correspond to the position of red, amber, green in A2, A3 and A4. Strictly speaking, the images are still floating over the cells, but Excel is treating them as if they are in the cells. Now, in the previous step, I created a name, percent target, and assigned the name to C12. I could then use the name in a formula. That was an example of a fixed name. The name is assigned to a specific cell. But you can also create dynamic names. When you create the name, you assign it to a formula, not a specific cell reference. The cell that the name refers to will be determined by the result of the formula. To create a dynamic name, you have to use the name manager, which you'll find on the formulas tab. So I'll click on the formulas tab, click on name manager. I'm going to create a new name, which I'm going to call light color. And in the refers to, instead of referring to a specific cell, I need a formula. What this formula is saying is return the contents of one of the cells in the range A2 to A4. Which cell within that range depends on what's in C1. So right now, because C1 contains 1, the result of the formula is the contents of A2. And that's because A2 is the first cell in the range A2 to A4. If C1 had contained 3, the formula would return the contents of A4. Because A4 is the third cell in the range A2 to A4, and so on. OK, so finally, I'm ready to add the traffic light onto the tracker sheet. I'll select any of the cells that contain an image. And I need to make sure I select the cell, not the image. It's really simple to click on the image. So what I usually do is click on the cell to the right and then use the left arrow key on the keyboard to select the cell. Once I've selected the cell, and as I said, it doesn't matter whether I'd chosen A2, A3 or A4, I need to copy. So on the Home tab, copy and then go to the step tracker sheet and go to E8. And it's E8 because that's where I want the traffic light. And then instead of clicking paste, click the arrow next to paste or on Windows, it's the arrow under the paste button and select linked picture. What it's done is it's pasted in the contents of the cell that I selected but it's pasted it in as a linked image. Now, at the moment, if you look in the formula bar, it's actually picking up the contents of A2 on the setup sheet. I need to replace that formula with another formula that references the name light color, which is the name that I gave to that index function. 
So now if I go up to F4 and I overtype that with 20,000, the value in C12 changes to 88% and you can see it brings in a different image. Change it to 25,000. The value in C12 is now 100% and it's brought in the green image. So what it's doing is it is bringing in different images depending on the value that's in C1. I'd like to remove the border and place a gray background. To remove the border, click on the image and on the picture format tab, use the crop button. And then I'll just crop very, very slightly just to remove the border and click on the crop button to turn the cropping off. If I click away from that image, the border has now gone. To add the gray background, I'm going to add a square by choosing insert shapes and picking a rectangle, drawing the rectangle around the traffic light. I want to remove the border from that rectangle or square by going up to shape format, shape outline, no outline, I also need to change the color to a gray or whatever color I want. And then with a rectangle or square in this case selected again on the shape format menu, click on send backwards. And that's it, a traffic light to visually display how we're doing against target. And more importantly, the functionality I've used to do it is available in all versions of Excel. Did you find this video useful? If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you'd like to keep up to date with what I'm up to, why not sign up to my weekly newsletter? And you can do that at theexceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.